Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening. A war is brewing over TAFE as Labor hits out over low enrolments and high dropouts. With a major union also concerned, the government is defending its trades track record. With a handyman harder than ever to find, Tasmania's high-vis army wants you. We've had a huge increase uh, in terms of people taking up trade training uh, and uh, that's been driven by our focus on making sure that uh, training is centred around how we can deliver more jobs because we want more builders, not more basket weavers. But that boom appears to be on the turn. New data shows vocational education enrolments have dropped after enormous intakes during the pandemic, while course withdrawals have surged. All coming as Taz Tafe's hammered by criticism from ex-staff and unions. If that institution's on its knees due to lack of funding and or care, how can you say that you've got the best interests of the high-vis army, for instance, um, at heart? The Communications, Electrical and Plumbing Union says students are being left without support thanks to staffing woes, with assessments also held up. They're not getting paid the wage that they deserve as becoming a qualified tradesperson. But then business can't go and deploy those people as tradespeople either because they're still supervised apprentices. The Skills and Training Minister not phased by the numbers as Labor points to disgruntled staff. You're seeing them speak out almost monthly about the toxic workplace. It is a failed reform. They've shown no interest. They have no plans for TAFE uh, or teachers in their um, little red book. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. Tassel has been dealt a blow over its use of seal crackers. The salmon company had applied for an exemption to continue using them while maintaining its Aquaculture Stewardship Council certification. A Tassel spokesperson says it's committed to staff at wildlife safety and will continue to work closely with the ASC. Seals are a protected species in Tasmania. They shouldn't be bombed by an industry in order to raise their product. The crackers are permitted under the state government's salmon framework. Primary Industries Minister Jo Palmer says her expectation is they're used only as a last resort. There's a new spring in the step of tourists checking out one of the most popular lookouts on Kanani, Mount Wellington. It's one of many sites and walking tracks listed to be improved as thousands continue to flock to the most visited natural site in Tasmania. Securing the perfect selfie at a lookout with the perfect view. Such a beautiful trip and the views were just amazing so we wanted to see the amazing views. This lookout and um, the zigzag track, finishing the zigzag track which is again a very iconic track um, is a really important priority for us in the next year. The Springs Lookouts just received an $80,000 facelift, something Destination Southern Tasmania says is essential to ensure Kanani Mount Wellington continues to host busloads of tourists and locals for years to come. There's a, there's a lot of visitation here and we certainly need to look strategically about how we manage that visitation, manage that transport solution and also invest in infrastructure. Hobart City Council spent around $15 million in the past five years on visitor infrastructure at the site. The Wellington Park Management Trust also contributing, both groups calling for additional funding. Yeah, well, it was, road maintenance is a huge thing. We just spent hundreds of thousands of dollars upgrading the, uh, the rails and the roads and all that. There's toilet facilities and all that as well. Mount Wellington is currently our state's second most visited tourist attraction and the most visited natural site, prompting urgent action to keep infrastructure evolving. The work's also focusing on encouraging people to explore more than just the peak. And that we certainly need to make sure that we have a plan in place for the future, for the next 50, 100 years, that creates an experience that the visitors are going to love, disperses people around the mountain. A series of walking track refurbishments across the mountain are set to get underway soon. Ruby Cairns, 7 Tasmania News. Working through the health system can be daunting, but Tasmanian Health Insurer St Luke's has launched a new service to demystify it. Members and non-members can now access free sessions with health navigators for practical help. It's a wide spectrum between people who are looking to stay healthy or get a little bit fitter, through to people that might have surgical needs, through to people that have complex health needs. I was able to talk openly and confidentially to the health navigator about a particular concern and then covered some other concerns 
around the health of my husband. It's currently live in Hobart and being rolled out around the state. A four-year plan to improve water quality in the Tamar estuary is showing signs of success, with landowners playing a role in helping keep our waterways clean. The state government is hailing the $11.5 million catchment works program a success. Designed to keep pathogens out of the local waterways, the government has been working in unison with the agricultural sector to improve the river's health. We had a target of try, hoping that we would be able to see about 4.7% of pathogens uh, removed from uh, the stretch of water. We are more on a target now to see a reduction in about 7.3%. The program supports farmers in keeping stock out of the waterways with the installation of fencing, cattle crossings and planting of vegetation. Farm animals, a major polluter of the waterways. The dam used to be our fence line and the cattle would walk in to drink and then they could walk through it if the dam got low. Uh, once we've fenced it all off, they obviously can't go in there anymore. It's created a great buffer. The fences will keep more than 18,000 head of cattle, 7,000 dairy cows and 220,000 sheep from accessing the waterways. The catchment works program delivered by Natural Resource Management North in conjunction with state and federal governments has supported 150 landowners. The projects that we're supporting are for landholders on dairy and grazing properties to enable them to fence their stock out of waterways and uh, improve effluent management on dairy farms. Melinda Ogden, 7 Tasmania News. And with five cricket, AFL and soccer clubs sharing Launceston's NTCA sports complex, it's getting pretty crowded. Council proposing a major refurbishment to expand and bring the ailing ground into the 21st century. Funding is yet to be locked in and consultation is underway. Meanwhile, work to repair the Cataract Gorge Walk after a landslip last year is about 70% complete. Council expects to reopen the popular path by March. A new driver mentor program is making its way to the northwest, giving young motorists a kickstart on their driving journey. It's hoped the initial rollout will also help unlock more employment opportunities. Behind the wheel and ready to switch more L plates to P's, the Northwest Driver Mentor Program is promising to make the 80-hour logbook process a little less daunting. Regional and uh, remote parts of our state, uh, young people getting access to driver mentors is critical. The number of lessons uh, sessions that we're going to deliver in each region, we've linked that to where the learner drivers are. The free community-led initiative is designed to help up to 90 young Northwesters, moving them a step closer to their driver's licence, one reverse park at a time. By being able to uh, step in and help uh, provide that mentoring, uh, we can then uh, get people on the road. Unlocking another pathway to employment, the project is also tipped to steer more local job opportunities. One of the barriers in regard to employment in regional and remote areas is around transport. The ability to be able to get your licence is so important. With a team of dedicated mentors promising more than just the hottest driving tips. We can help them with a whole range of other barriers uh, that, that they have to, to getting employment and that could be around homelessness, drug and alcohol issues. Victoria Risto, 7 Tasmania News. Yesterday's contract extension must be a distant memory for Scott Roth with his side's battle for a finals berth, stepping up a notch against ladder leaders Melbourne United tonight. While the Jack Jumpers can little afford another loss, tonight's challenge isn't as daunting as it might first appear. Tasmania is the only club in the comp with a winning record against Melbourne, having won 7 of 11 encounters. After suffering heartbreak at the 2022 Commonwealth Games, weightlifter Kyle Bruce has come to Launceston to train with one of Australia's best. Leaving Birmingham with a silver medal, Kyle wants to go one better in Paris, but first, he needs to qualify. If you had to measure the weight of expectation... For Kyle Bruce, it might be 183 kilograms, the weight that temporarily won him a Commonwealth Games gold medal in 2022 before a video review of a bent elbow saw him take silver instead. Still an incredible achievement, but one he wants to build on. 
the gym becoming a second home as the 25 year old set sights on Paris. So we're training 10 times a week at the moment. Um, we're probably training about close to 30 hours into the gym. Each session's three, four hours like that. So we're putting in the work, but um, you know, it's going really well. The Sydney side is now in Launceston to train with Olympian Ron Laycock, a four-time Commonwealth Games medalist. He's the best ever Australian-born weightlifter. So with that comes a vast amount of knowledge and information that I can learn from him. Ron's expertise will be golden. The path to Olympic qualification in weightlifting is an uncertain one. It used to just be you rank one in the country, you'll go forward. So if it was in those circumstances, I would be going. However, now it has changed quite a bit. You need to be the best in your continent. So for us, it's being number one in Oceania. Which means Kyle will be keeping one eye on his competition until the team is locked in mid-April. Ron tells me all the time, don't worry about other people. You focus on yourself. You do the best you can. You lift the best weights you can and you won't have to worry about that. There's plenty to mull over for Hurricanes coach Jeff Vaughan after another season which saw the side fall agonisingly short of Big Bash finals. Looking back, he'd prefer more early wickets from the bowlers and greater consistency from the batting order, but he's still feeling positive. We had some really nice individual performances, speaking about young Mac or uh, uh, Nicky Chowdhury as well. And yeah, some, some performances where uh, we couldn't get it done when, uh, when the heat was really in the kitchen. Four now goes back to concentrating on the Tigers' Sheffield Shield campaign, which starts back up in a fortnight. Launceston's Georgia Baker has come off second best in an upset finish of the Tour Down Under Criterium. Baker looking poised to pounce on the final lap, but it was 19-year-old Dutch rider Nienke Veenhoven springing to the front after the home turn, stealing first in a photo finish just ahead of Baker. Good evening, hope you enjoyed your Friday. It's always good on Friday, isn't it? Well, the weather was Hobart and Burnie 23 today, Launceston the top with 27, Devonport a high of 26. We had above average temperatures in the northeast, St Helens 26 today, Friendly Beach is 25, Low Head 23 and Bushy Park 22, Flinders Island and Grove 21. Cooler conditions over Strawn and King Island, bit of cloud over there. We'll see now random showers today over the west and mostly light showers though. Uh, Lake Margaret had 7 millimetres today as that cloud stuck to the west coast. Low cloud also is over Victoria and South Australia. An area of high cloud is just to our west and the thunderstorm activity continues over the far north. Tomorrow the high slides over the Tasman Sea. Now a trough is set to cross Tasmania tomorrow as well. We'll uh, have some variable winds developing. They'll tend northeasterly at 10 to 20 knots and then shifting south southeasterly by tomorrow night. No warnings for you, so a bit calmer. Hobart, a shower or two developing though, a top of 23, 21 the high for Medina, a late shower for Oatlands and 21 the maximum. Launceston, 23 with a possible shower. Cloudy for Devonport, 21 the high. Cooler one for Lyawini, a shower in 17 degrees. Burnie cloudy and 20, 21 for Strawn, possible shower as well for Marawar, 22 the maximum. Down the east coast, shower or two, St Helens 23, 24 for Swansea and Orford a top of 22 degrees. Isolated showers extending statewide on Sunday, scattering in the afternoon. Similar weather on the way for Monday with winds tending southeasterly and on Tuesday mainly fine, maybe a shower developing in the afternoon. A sunny 33 in Perth tomorrow, even warmer in Adelaide, 35, partly cloudy in Melbourne, partly cloudy and 29 in Sydney, a shower for Brisbane and 30 degrees. And in Hobart it's 19 at the moment, temperature still holding up in Launceston, 25 currently and 23 in Devonport. I know you love Fridays, Kim, you can spend the weekend at one of your many seaside residences. Where is it this weekend? Oh, stop it. I am going to go fishing, though, in the northeast, and that is all your news for now. Michael will be with you over the weekend. For now, on behalf of the team, good night.